I want to speak today concerning mental health. I believe that one of the most crippling things a person can have is not physical crippleness. It's when a person has a mental problem. In fact, there are some of the smartest people on the earth on the wheelchair. Because as long as the mind is free and prosperous, you're not limited by the physical restrictions. I'm not in any way downplaying paralysis or downplaying physical limitations like when person don't have limbs or person a person does not have particular bodily functions but like for example Nick who doesn't have limbs who it seems like on the outside is supposed to be crippled yet he writes books finished bachelor's degree led presidents I think he's led Brazilian president to the Lord without legs and makes an impact now has children and ch literally is changing the world why because it what matters at the end of the day is what happens here not what happens with your hands or with your feet also some of the smartest people in our generation are physically crippled but because they're not mentally crippled they're still able to make a difference in their generation and they're able to make a difference in their world Satan is playing target practice with everyone's mind. Everyone's shooting and you do target practice where you make uh, this target and you start trying to shoot to see if you can hit it and you can miss a few times and then you finally hit it and that's what exactly devil does with everyone's mind. He plays target practice with your mind. His number one focus and target is not your body, it's your mind. He wants to destroy your mind. He will use the sickness in the body to inflict the mind. He will use the poverty to torture the mind. He will use relationship problems. One of the children that's not doing good, he will use that to harass the mind. Sometimes he will use the external circumstances to glitch the mind. You know when your mind is glitching? You can't get out of your own head. You're like you're stuck in there. And the Bible says think on these things and you feel like your thinking is doing the thinking by itself. And you can't control it. It's thinking by itself. You're like stop it. And it's thinking. It's saying stuff in your head. It's like it's harassing you. It's like this intrusive thoughts. And my friend I want to tell you something that the enemy is an architect of a mental glitch. And the person sometimes has both legs both arms, has a retirement fund, a government job, has a car and has a house and mentally they are in prison. Mentally they can't function. Something is broken there. I remember uh, Saul from our church, she had a, an iPhone that was doing functions on its own. And so she, she helps me to manage some of my Instagram and she would write to these um, people, you know, like, thank you for following and everything. And then she said that the phone by itself start calling, video calling people on Instagram. By itself, randomly choosing contacts and just video chatting with them randomly. Now, how many of you know that's not good? When the phone has a mind of its own, that's a mind control. And some people that's exactly what they experience with their mind. When their mind controls their life instead of their spirit controlling their mind. And so when there is a war that's been declared on your mind, when an anxiety attacks, when depression attacks, when you feel like your mind has made you a target and harasses you and torments you and instead of you leading your mind, your mind is tormenting and torturing you. And COVID news media you know what happened in our nation the protests the elections everything contributed to a huge attack on the minds of people in this day if you're watching us on live stream you know i want you to spam the chat if you agree that the devil really plays a target practice with your mind and today we want to equip you and also pray that god will begin to bring healing not just to our body but to begin to bring healing also to our mind Sometimes the enemy uses our past experiences to build strongholds in our mind. That even if we are no longer in those situations, we're still living in the residue, in the painful consequences of being in those situations. Israel went through Egypt, but then Egypt went through them. 
because even when they got out of Egypt the Egypt never got out of them like they say you can take a man out of a ghetto but you can't take the ghetto out of a man once the person goes through sickness once the person goes through rejection through divorce and even if they're not in that situation the enemy's goal is to infiltrate their mind with that situation so even if they're no longer there there is in them and that's what the bible calls stronghold and God wants us to cast down strongholds see demons we cast out strongholds we cast down demons come and leave quickly but strongholds are broken down slowly demons come out through the anointing of the Holy Spirit but strongholds are broken down through the Holy Scriptures through being in the community through developing habits of worship through training your thoughts turning your thoughts over to God and begin to work with your mind mind management is the most important thing for a believer because your success doesn't start on the outside it starts on the inside your success does not start with your education it starts with your mind your prosperity does not begin with how wealthy your father or your mother was it begins with your mind that's why Apostle John says I pray you will be in good health and prosper as your mind prospers as your soul prospers that means that we cannot prosper on the outside permanently if we are broke on the inside and today God wants to shift some things and equip us to be mentally sound one of the reasons that I'm talking about that is because the fallacy the faulty thinking is this well Vlad I understand that's really cool and stuff but if God really wants me to change my mind he should get busy changing my circumstances and this is our concept is my mind will change if my life changes but scripture flips the script and the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 the opposite it says your mind has to change first so that your life transforms you don't have to wait for your spouse to change before you change your mind don't wait for your circumstances to change before you change your mind God says in fact they are waiting for you to change your mind you have to work with your mind and God gives us His Word, God gives us the church, God gives us our friends, God gives us His Spirit so that our mind changes. The real reason the Lord wants us to begin to manage our mind and begin and wants to bring healing also to our mind is that our life currently is headed in the direction of our most dominant strongest thoughts. Your life is currently following the direction of your most dominant strongest thoughts where those thoughts are at that's exactly where your emotions where your body and everything is headed to if those thoughts are I am a failure if those thoughts are my life sucks everyone around me hates me I'm rejected I'm lonely not only you and I are in danger of letting these thoughts invite demons but sometimes these thoughts were already sent by demons so that these thoughts can open the door to demons did you catch that sometimes these thoughts are sent by demons themselves why because if we hold on to them it will open the door to them so that then the demons begin to torture our life it says in book of Acts when Peter rebukes Ananias and he says why did you let Satan fill your heart to lie it says in John chapter 13 that Satan put on the heart of Judas to betray him and few verses later the Bible says Satan entered Judas it's almost like he sent the thought seeing will Judas take it receive it cook with it feed it nurture it adopt it and if he does that it will open the door for me to enter him and begin to bring havoc in his life my friend satan uses thoughts to harass christians and if we hold on and these root these thoughts take root in our mind they begin to develop life of its own in our mind 
they become stronghold mindset they go into our subconscious thinking what it thinks on its own you can't even stop it it's like a glitch it just attacks you now harasses you it can open door to the demonic influence and God wants to liberate us from that amen the book of life shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night and then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success Joshua 1 8 mind management is the priority of an overcomer because your winning starts within you not around you now in the scripture Bible talks about one two three four five six seven types of minds seven minds I'm gonna give you quickly verses and I'm gonna and then we're gonna dive in on how to begin to see a shift in the state of our mind seven types of minds the first mind is the right mind Do you remember demon possessed man who Jesus delivered and the scripture says in Mark chapter 5 verse 15 then they came to Jesus and saw a man who had been demon possessed and had a legion sitting and clothe and in his right mind that means you can have a left mind <laughs> you can have a wrong mind this is not just talking about a thought this is talking about a state of a mental environment your mental atmosphere the right mind this doesn't just mean that he finally had one right thought this means that dominant thoughts were right the strongest thoughts were now right thoughts and this was a sign that he was delivered is that he was sitting he was clothed and the bible says and he was in his right mind are you in your right mind is what's happening in your mind constantly always regularly your strongest thoughts are they are they right or are they wrong if you take it back to take back and take it through the scan and just become aware of what's going on in your head is it right state of mind or is it wrong because when Jesus comes he wants to bring you to a place where your mind is right your finances might not be right yet your family might not be right yet but the first thing Jesus did to this man he didn't give him money he didn't brought him a wife he didn't build him a house he didn't give him a new car or a job he didn't give him a degree he gave him a right mind one of the greatest gifts my friend if you have a right mind you are blessed by God you don't realize how powerful it is to have a mind that doesn't glitch until you get one that glitches and then you begin to look back in your life and you're like man nothing comes in comparison to having a right mind when it doesn't harass you intrude torment and trip you up this is the first mind the right mind the second kind of mind in Titus chapter 1 verse 8 but it talks about bishops bishops be hospitable a lover of what is good sober minded somebody say sober mind just holy and self-controlled sober mind see we know what it's like when a person is sober meaning you're not intoxicated that means that you're not not normal but there is also sober mind sometimes the enemy intoxicates our mind with our problems and it becomes inflated and we begin to exaggerate this, the facts we begin to feel like my life sucks no you just had a bad day you don't have a bad life you just had a flat tire no you're just on your period that's why no this is just you know what it's just it's just Monday all right you just had not had coffee that kicked in and the devil wants your mind to be intoxicated meaning that you are exaggerating and you're saying things that are not true you're not sober and we need to sober up in our mind God wants his word to make us sober in our mind that we think clearly about the situation we look at our life and we, we see it could always suck more and be grateful to God be thankful to God in the whatever situation that we are in and not be not sober in our mind a lot of Christians don't drink their mind does what liquor has devil been giving to your mind to drink 
which news medias have been intoxicating your mind and causing things to see darker than they are worse than they are and make you feel terrible about your life when in reality your life is not that bad many people in a coma right now or on the dialysis who would trade to have your problems there are people today that are on a death row that would love to have your problems my, my friend God wants you to have a sober mind come on somebody say sober mind the next mind in 2 Timothy 1 8 it says for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind come on somebody shout sound mind somebody dropped it in the chat sound mind so we see a right mind we see a sober mind and we see a sound mind see I want you to notice this is not just sound thought where once in a while you have us even every even a crazy person once in a while has a sound thought <laughs> having a sound thought does not mean you have a sound mind sound thought meaning once in a while something good crosses through your head when you have a sound mind means the dominant and the strongest and perpetual thoughts are sound. Sound meaning they're not sick. They're not sick. Bitterness, envy, hatred. Just when you, for some reason you just are, you just hate. Those are not sound thoughts. They are sick. Those thoughts got COVID. Those thoughts got arthritis those thoughts they're not healthy and maybe none of the body parts have sickness but remember one thing sooner or later if your thoughts dominant thoughts are not sound they will infect your organs this is a medical fact and I'm not a doctor you can read this on almost every health website and talk to every medical professionals and they will tell you most of our organs and our physical problems are a result of the state of our mind not once in a while bad thought a state meaning perpetual consistent constant continual strongest dominant thoughts the bible says that an envy spirit it rottens the bone broken spirit when you're broken on the inside it affects your body organs so sound mind is extremely healthy to your sound body it's good to take vitamin D, vitamin C, A, Z, X. Every vitamin is good. It's good to eat your broccoli. It's good to eat the fish, less steak. It's good to take the whole grain. It's good to drink your smoothies. It's to drink your water. It's good to get enough sleep. But my friend, if your mind is sick, you are not treating the root of the problem. You are treating the symptoms by dealing on your body instead of your mind. One mother came in one time. And took a garbage from her garbage can and dropped it on her son's plate. He says, Mom, why did you put that in? He says, Well, if you don't mind putting garbage in your mind, you shouldn't mind putting garbage on your plate. My friend, keep your mind sound. It will do more good to your body than any vitamins that you put. I'm not against taking care of your body. Don't get me, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. But what I'm saying is that God wants you to have a sound mind not just few sound thoughts because every even the crazy one of us among here have once in a while few sound thoughts that circulate the head the only problem is they never land <laughs> they never stay <laughs> and it's the crazy ones that hang out over there and adopt themselves as your children and they literally like plant themselves in your mind you're like man what are you doing here and they're like well I'm part of you now God wants you to have a sound mind somebody shout sound mind Romans chapter 8 verse 6 we're going to look at the fourth mind to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace somebody say spiritual mind or spiritually minded so this is the mind that focuses on the spiritual things this is the mind that focuses on the things of God God wants you to have not only a spirit but your mind focused on your spirit because the problem with many of us is that the Bible says is that the spirit of your mind meaning your mind can have a spirit behind it your mind can have a force behind it your mind can become its own master 
and the scripture tells us not to make mind into a master we don't worship our mind we don't trust our thoughts we trust with our thoughts we train our thoughts we turn our thoughts over to God we direct them you, like you train a child you don't let the child do what they want and figure themselves out you're like well you know I just want them to have the freedom no you don't want them to have the freedom you want them to be cared and have certain disciplines same thing with your thoughts it needs to be trained directed and the Bible says he who turns their thoughts toward God you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you whose mind is stayed on you so it's not once in a while I direct my thoughts I direct the flow of my strongest thoughts on God and something begins to happen my life becomes spiritual why because I'm directing my mind's attention toward the Holy Ghost I'm directing my mind's attention toward God I'm directing my mind's attention toward his promise I'm directing my mind's attention toward the things that are eternal I'm directing my mind's attention toward the things that will not die when I die but they will live forever it's God it's his word it's his spirit it's his promise it's his glory it's him seated on the throne it's him coming back as a reigning king it is him and his spirit that dwells inside of me when your mind becomes spiritual you are focusing on the spiritual things somebody give God some praise right now Luke chapter 12 verse 29 it says do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink nor have an anxious mind so we talked about the right mind the sound mind we talked about the sober mind we talked about the spiritual mind because it's focused on the things of God but then we're gonna hit some negative minds anxious mind now everyone has an anxious moments and thoughts what the enemy wants to do is he wants to take the anxious situations and infiltrate your mind so that you will not just have an anxious day you will not just have a depressing moment or week you will become the embodiment of that moment and you will continue to live out that moment even if that moment is no longer there that's what a person has an anxious mind they're anxious when they're not anxious they're depressed when they're not depressed meaning they're always like that they're negative always like that it's like a person who had this weird cheese stuck under on, on their forehead somebody you know put some cheese on them they woke up and they said the car stinks they went to the house they said the house stinks they went to the store they said the store stinks they went outside and they said the whole world stinks in reality it was just the cheese on the on the head and that's what happens with an anxious mind it's the mind that's anxious not life now does life have have difficult moments Jesus said he says in this world you'll have tribulation but be of good cheer he didn't say but be depressed he didn't say in this world you will have tribulation but be anxious he didn't he said do not be afraid our faith is an optimistic faith Christianity is not a depressing Debbie the Downer faith Christianity is not walking walking around hunched back head down and constantly expecting things to go from bad to worse Christianity is a faith where we square our shoulders lift our eyes to the hills where our help comes from because our help comes from God Christianity is a faith where my, my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I Christianity is a faith where you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you Christianity is a faith that says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you you ask for anything and I shall give Give it to you and my father will be glorified if you receive what you ask for my friend it's the it's a faith of faith it's the faith of victory it's the faith of glory it's the faith of power it's the faith of righteousness it's the faith of love it's the faith of peace my friend if you have an anxious mind God wants to disrupt it today God wants to remove that and renew that and remodel that and give you a new mind I'm not just talking about give you once in a while a few little cool thoughts see that's a problem with an anxious mind if somebody gives you a very precious gift you will have a positive happy thought for a moment but somebody has to keep on giving you gifts every single four five six hours for you to think positive thoughts because your default thinking is anxious and those gifts were off but when you have a right mind the mind does the positive thinking the mind does the sound thinking because it's anchored in the word of God Romans chapter 1 verse 20, 28 the next mind 
and even when they did, did not retain, did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do things which are not fitting. The word debased there in the original is rejected, cast away, not standing a test, not approved. That which does not prove itself as such is odd. Meaning it's a mind that failed the test. And this mind is different than the rest of them because in this one, God throws you into it. The enemy doesn't give you this one. You didn't pick up going through a very difficult season of your life. This is when you willfully and ignorantly, when you begin to ignore, not ignorantly, but when you begin to ignore God on purpose, not put God's word and God honestly has it enough and he gives you up. He doesn't give up on you. He just honestly takes his protection and your mind goes glitch and your mind it's failed. Your mind has not been approved. It's rejected. And guess what that mind does to you? It does the same thing to you. It makes you a failure. It makes you feel like a failure. And the person with this state of mind has to start with repentance. You can't just go back and rebuke in the devil because the devil is not the problem here. God lifted his hand of protection and your, your mind went bananas. And you need to experience first repentance, putting God back in your mind. And the last mind, Romans chapter 8 verse 6, and that is the carnal mind. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law, 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 law of God, nor indeed can be. What is this mind? It's the mind, a spiritual mind is focused on the spirit. The carnal mind is focused on the pleasures of life, cares of this world, success it's focused on the physical realm it's not a sinful per se it's just carnal it's just not spiritual it, fo it focuses on entertainment it focuses on the pleasures of life it makes the idol out of pleasures and it becomes the state of somebody's being the person can for a moment 15 minutes they can focus on God but the rest of their life is consumed with the things of this world and the Bible says this kind of mind it, it fights against the things of God this kind of a person cannot fully walk with the Lord because this person lives in the flesh walks in the flesh sets their mind on the flesh and therefore they have a mindset perpetual continuous non-stop dominant most powerful thoughts are focused on the earthly things to them giving is, is dumb Praying is a waste of time. Going to church, why would you want to do that? I can do so many other things. For them, reading the Bible, that's an old book. What can that teach me? Well, you want me to serve at the church? I don't have time for that. Why? Because a carnal mind fights against the spiritual things. It looks at spiritual things and says, you guys are a bunch of crazies. You guys are a bunch of just, 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 you know, just religious people. Because it's a carnal mind that has that. And even Christians had, can have the potential of having a carnal mind. But God wants us to have a spiritual mind. Amen. In the conclusion, I want to just give you very simple practical steps on how to begin to shift your mind. Please understand, you can't change your mind until you take responsibility for your thoughts. You can't change your mind in an instant. That's like going in and changing your whole house in five minutes. There is no prayer that can turn your shack into a mansion. There is no prayer that can take your bicycle and turn it into an airplane. There's no anointing oil. There is no casting out of demons. We can bring a fire hose to spray on you. But if your mind's been like this, it does not change overnight. You can get delivered quickly. You can get healed quickly. You can get married quickly. You can get a lot of stuff quickly. But one thing you cannot get quickly is change your mind. And it first starts, first it starts with taking responsibility for your thoughts. The moment we shift the responsibility on God or the moment we just opt out and say you know what I can't control my thoughts this is where the problem begins. We have to take responsibility for our thoughts and so let's just dive in. The first thing that I mentioned is take responsibility for your thoughts. The second thing that I want you to do and this is this is huge take care of your physical brain. Your brain is like the piano. Your mind is like the pianist. Now, he plays piano. Piano doesn't play him, right? But if there is no piano, pianist cannot play piano. 
a lot of people do not take care of their physical brain when you consume drugs you're damaging your brain when you consume alcohol you're damaging your brain when you're not eating properly you are damaging your brain now there are accidents that could happen to each one of us car accidents you can fall somewhere and have a concussion or or damage your brain we're not talking about that we can't control that but there are things that we can do that could really hurt our brain through drugs through alcohol through sleep deprivation through not eating properly through not hanging out in the society and being in the community what we do is we damage certain chemicals begin to be missing in our brain and after that our mind can't play full melody because the keys are broken you know sometimes in the piano certain keys just don't work and so you can't play the what you want to play because keys are broken and many people don't realize how important that is to begin to take care of your brain your brain is an organ but your mind is a spiritual you spiritual part of you and your spiritual part of you cannot do the thinking if your brain has been jeopardized we have to take care of the brain we have to eat the broccoli. We have to eat more fish and less steak. We have to sleep more. We have to take vitamins. We have to do everything we can so that our brain is healthy. Come on somebody. And some people they need to see the doctor. Some people need to see and supplement certain missing chemicals there. And we have to do whatever it takes that our brain is protected. Brain is, is, is a physical organ that needs to be well taken care of. And if it's not well taken care of, you're not taking care of your mind because your mind cannot do its work without its brain and brain needs to be taken care of come on somebody help me the help, help my brain lord help my brain amen number three and i think the points there are a little bit different number three is get out of your head so first i can't change my mind if i don't take responsibility for my thoughts secondly is i have to take care of my brain and number three i have to get out from my head what does that mean as a christian you must understand you have thoughts you are not your thoughts this is a huge revelation the scripture tells us think on these things the scripture doesn't say that thinking does the thinking you're doing the thinking the thinking is not doing you so we have to draw the line in the sand and when you notice your mind is doing its own thinking making its own calls sending its own message you say whoa stop stop why because the bible says as a man thinks so is he it doesn't say as things think so is the man meaning you're doing the thinking the thinking should not be doing you the thinking should not be thinking on its own and when it does then you have to put in the brakes and say stop why because i am a spirit i am not a mind i'm a spirit and i can tell my mind shut up stop don't go there you can't cross there and so you are not your thoughts you have thoughts but you are not your thoughts and therefore when you notice that you are living in your head get out of your head open that prison door and say i'm coming out of this why and i'm gonna tell my mind what to do no, my mind is not gonna dictate my emotions my mood and my life come on somebody are you with me Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So Paul is telling us to think on these things. Therefore, we got to remove this lie. I can't control my thoughts. You cannot control your mind until you first take responsibility for your thoughts. But you can't control your thoughts otherwise bible will never tell you to think on these things you can't dictate your thoughts otherwise the bible will not say as a man thinks so is he you can control your thoughts and it starts with you announcing to yourself to your thoughts and to your mind and to every minion running in your mind and controlling your mind and causing a glitch to hey there's a boss there's a sheriff in town and that's not you 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 it's me my spirit is going to come make the shots my spirit is going to make the shots in this mind and not you 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 so you listen you listen you listen and you're fired you're fired and you're fired why because you're misbehaving come on somebody number three or no, number four capture thoughts before you can make them captive you can't make thoughts captive until you capture them capture them meaning becoming aware of them 
it says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 and 17 above all taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God before we can take our thoughts captive we first have to become aware of them and the best way to do that is to stop for a moment take a pause and breathe and just observe what's cooking there and just observe why are these thoughts thinking on their own like that always without your permission where did it start who planted this who injected this into my head where's the basis for that where's this going why is this happening and when you observe you become aware what you just did you just captured them before they were just thinking on their own now the boss saw somebody trespassing somebody misbehaving and only then you can captivate what you captured but if you're not aware that there's lonely thoughts running rampant in your mind you can capture you can't subdue them because you don't even know their name when you notice rejection it's constant like smallest little thing happens and you overthink as somebody rejected you where did it start from why has this been in my life it's always on default on the background like a screensaver five minutes and it just shows up on its own and then you're like no wonder and people reject me all the time is this because people reject me or do people reject me because I have this thought running on the background you observe you become aware because when you become aware Paul says fiery darts these are not just thoughts this is not just you this is not just the world is crazy nobody likes you what if this is a fiery dart that is flying in and you're seeing it you captured it you caught that you say okay no nope, mm -mm, you're not going any further you stop right here you abort that you remove that and you say no that this doesn't go any further you can't captive something take captive until you capture it until you are aware of that come on somebody are you with me number five don't focus and emptying your mind it will lead to Eastern meditation fill it emptying your mind is passive filling your mind is active emptying your mind makes you susceptible to demonic infiltration filling your mind makes you powerful because you can push away every demonic infiltration emptying your mind is really can lead to demonization but filling your mind can lead you to the filling of the Holy Spirit and so Bible never gives us this passive kind of like to just relax just just breathe just just kind of just think about nothing that's very dangerous you don't want to do that you want to fill your mind intentionally and actively aggressively and purposefully it's a war over there you can't walk around over there without a weapon you, you you're coming to a war in your mind you're not coming for a vacation this is not a Hawaii trip this is a war zone and you gotta begin to feel active be active many people cannot change their mind because simply they're lazy they're just lazy they're not active with their thoughts they're not active with what's happening there they're just playing passive and then they come and say like hey man of God deliver me hey man of God pray for me but my friend God wants to make you active he wants to train your hands for war and your fingers for battle he wants you to train your thoughts he wants you to raise your thoughts he wants you to direct your thoughts come on get busy you gotta pull away the weeds and plant the seeds and water the seeds you gotta get active in your mind you can't just let it think on its own you gotta pull back press the brakes replace the brakes replace the engine replace the transmission if you need to you gotta work on this baby you gotta work on this thing read study listen meditate memorize confess scriptures and the last one is take every thought captive like a prisoner of war thoughts are transgressors sometimes they need to be treated as such they need to be enslaved thoughts if you don't enslave them if you don't make them into captives you will become a captive of them you either take your thoughts captive or you are a captive of your thoughts you either turn your thoughts to God or your thoughts will rule your life you either trust God with your thoughts or your thoughts will dictate the direction of your life and they're completely unpredictable they're crazy 
we see this in the scripture and this is the last verse for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds and casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to obedience of Christ have you noticed there is no passivity here have you noticed there's no I'm gonna sit on the back seat and let Jesus take the wheel Jesus ain't taking no wheels today in this area Jesus says if you don't get behind the wheel and hit the brake you're gonna crash a lot of us what we do there are areas we have to surrender this we don't surrender we subdue we fight here he says the weapons of our warfare that means your thoughts you don't bring a knife to a gunfight you got to bring God's weapon you got to bring the scripture the latest quote on Pinterest will not do come on the latest quote on, on Twitter will not do you got to bring a weapon and the weapon is the sword of the spirit you got to put God's word inside and you got to come arms ready full with the armor of God and then it says you turn your thoughts into captivity you got to get aggressive there's fantasies in our mind there's attitudes that rise against the knowledge of God and the truth of who God says about you you got to capture that and you got to bend them you got to cuff them up and if they give you things taser them and if that thought comes at you you pull up and you shoot that's the only thing Christians can shoot is bad thoughts everything else we love but bad thoughts you take them captive if they resist taser them hang off them shoot put that weapon to use you gotta go to war. People are like, man, I want my mind to be relaxing. I just want to, after a long day of work, I just want to sit and chill, chill and Netflix, my friend. If you're gonna chill and Netflix in your mind, your life will be nothing good. For life to be good, we have to do the war here. And after you win the wars, you'll enjoy the peace. But if there is no peace in your life and there's no peace in your mind, my friend, I want to tell you something. There is no prayer, there is no rebuking and commanding that will fix laziness and being inactive with our thoughts and with our mind.